Right, so I'm Charlie Smith talking about learning management systems and how they remove barriers to learning in a typical secondary school environment. A little bit about me, I'm originally a maths teacher, I've done a gradual shift towards digital technologies. Um, I've had a few roles at Pakaranga College, uh, but I've been largely on the digital side of things. Uh, my first fully digital maths class, as opposed to computing class, was in 2010. Uh, that was an interesting experience and I've been strongly involved in choice and implementation of our learning management systems over uh, the years going from Alternet we had a couple of versions of Alternet and then we made a transition to to Moodle so I, I've been around them a little while um, one thing that can be said is, is I, th I think the landscape has shifted a little bit we no longer um, have so many conversations about the learning management system uh, however I strongly believe it's still very much um, a critical part of making a school system tick and just just creating uh, an environment in which people can get the job done um, I'm not about Moodle but uh, in this session the the blurb did say this about learning management systems uh, so I'm going to try and keep it to that but um, there will probably be a few Moodle things that I say along the way. So the context of all of this is um, the, the, the somewhat splintered digital landscape. Um, we at Pakaranga, Billy said uh, in his session uh, before, uh, we, we encourage teachers to use whatever tool works for them. So we have some really innovative and um, exciting teachers, digital evangelists, who, who use whatever is the correct tool at that particular time, which is fantastic. Um, we, we strongly um, support that. Uh, not all teachers are quite so comfortable though, just trying a new thing and all the rest of it. Um, and it, it can be a very daunting place, as, as we all know. You know. It comes down to professional development. It's, uh, it's hard for a lot of teachers to um, to feel that they're keeping up, they uh, they feel they're feeling short of what is required of a 2015 teacher. We all love to beat ourselves up, teachers more than most, and they're always saying, "Ah, oh, I could be doing more. I should be doing what he's doing. I should be doing what she's doing." And of course, we're referring back to what Billy said in his session, um, the whole teenage sex thing. It's um, everyone says they're doing it. Actually, not many people are doing it. The ones who are doing it doing it badly. But our perception isn't that as as teachers. Um, students are typically a bit more resilient. A lot of them do get a bit of cognitive overload though. Yet another tool, which do we go to? How do you spell cahoots? What's Socrative for? So the context is, is, is a complex, um, or, or if you're trying to do anything interesting, it can be a quite a complex environment for um, students and particularly teachers. Also part of that complexity is that we've got uh, such a variety of um, devices out there with BYOD. It's undoubtedly the face of the future. Um, whether you choose to go down the single platform or be platform agnostic as we've chosen to, um, that's your own choice. But definitely um, it's, it's a broad landscape um, and we will we, definitely, it's, it's part of our philosophy that um, anyone can use any device as long as it meets a certain spec which these days is only about battery life and screen size really. Um, so each of these platforms has their own quirks, their own ecosystems, uh, their own things that work well, their own things that are a bit clunky. Uh, all of our students have the wireless access, they don't have network shares um, so it can be a little bit challenging to share stuff with them. Um, so you know the question is how do we we manage the the technology here how do, how do we get the, the technology in the classroom to behave itself and do what it's supposed to do so um, looking at students in class because um, all, all of these you know the the e-learning tools and the BYOD devices they're absolutely wonderful and there are barriers that come with them so in the classroom we're all about removing some of those those barriers in the classroom, one of the main issues is that starting up is hard. Never ever estimate how long it takes to get a whole class to one digital destination, no matter what it is. It might be the simplest thing in the world. You might just want to say to everyone, okay, just go to Google, which you'd think would be like 
the work of a, a few seconds, I'll flick on my device and so on, but the people who have turned their device fully off to save battery life or they've got something else running or it crashes and they can't get the wireless to work and they, they there's a million different ways that um, there can be problems um, and what we're talking about here is learning management system and how it, it can deal with that um, barriers to progressing as we go on um, uh, it's all about getting to the learning with the least overhead the more you have to think about how you get to the learning the less um, cognitive effort you can put into the actual learning um, and of course don't forget BYO distraction and there's um, it's a little bit cynical to be saying that but there are many many ways to be distracted in the classroom and um, it, it is very much the case that the devil makes work for idle hands and students will be um, find it very easy to to find something to do if there's a lot of downtime in the class and what everyone catches up we would try and you know manage technical issues the other thing of course is that students going through the school have got quite splintered experiences they go to five different classrooms during the course of the day and um, they in theory could see five completely different approaches to e-learning um, students are on the whole pretty good pretty resilient they, they're comfortable with hopping between apps and um, uh, different digital environments but it is quite a splintered experience uh, and you need to be thinking about some of them who perhaps have got some anxiety issues and they're just like oh gosh you know what next what next oh my gosh how, how am I supposed to keep up with all of this um, so the mitigations are by having the LMS in place is that we're always starting in the same place you, it's one of the things we say to staff we can do what you like but make the, the jumping off point Moodle that gives the students um, a better opportunity to to get where they need to go without having to, to um, fret so much um, and it also allows you to arrive in an asynchronous kind of way get your lesson started say okay right here we go and uh, instead of like then being constantly interrupted of, of like how do I spell cahoots and um, what's the um, thing we're supposed to be going to and you know is that dot com or dot co and all the rest of that they, they can get there in their own time they can look over each other's shoulders to see oh yeah go from Moodle click that link uh, and you don't have to say any more than that um, within the LMS as well um, one of the things that is quite relevant is although Moodle is not about e-learning and uh, in theory alternate is I mean the vendors will tell you very much that they are they say oh yeah this is our e-learning platform as well as our LMS um, typically the the tools aren't as good as the ones that you'll find elsewhere however they are there <coughs> and uh, the Moodle ones are actually really low overhead and get you can get a lot done if you're focused on the learning activity <coughs> rather than making it look pretty um, often the Moodle tools are the right tools to use so getting to the learning without having to um, be distracted constantly without um, so many ways to not get to the learning um, is pretty important uh, and after a while of course that there's a shorthand develops in the classroom it's an easy way to develop a routine it's not that easy to do if you you're know, using a four or five different um, e-learning tools over the course of a, a month or a term uh, but if you can always be starting at Moodle that's your routine that's the thing that gives you the structure in the classroom um, and, and just gives the, the teacher a little bit more time to to get on to things um, the other issues there are the um, on many sites and digital locations there's a need for a registration not all they're getting much better than they used to um, I think a lot of people have looked at that as being a major barrier and have, have dealt with it but there's still some there my experiences only this week I've been using um, Code Avengers with my year 10 class and I use Lucidchart with my year 9 class each each of those have got their own um, registration system so that I can kind of keep um, they can save their work and they can uh, also communicate with me Code Avengers I need to give them a uh, a logon and a password which I create 
and Lucidchart, they need to use their student Google account, the SSO side of it, to um, to register. And gosh, there's a lot of barriers to, to getting that going. You know, uh, the Lucidchart, well, it's actually the, the Google um, system, they have to type in their full ID at student.pacoing.school.nz and the the variety of ways that you can type in student.pacarang or pacarang.student.nz or student.school.nz or school.com or whatever um, it is absolutely astonishing the, the ways that students can stuff that up um, and of course we're all about making less work for idle hands while you're dealing with them logging on in that way then um, idle hands elsewhere are looking up fail army blogs and things like that videos on YouTube so not so um, productive in class um, so there's a, a lot in Moodle that makes life straightforward uh, in the classroom if you just use it as you, you can use it as a place that you provide the resources to students you can use it as the place where students actually do stuff and talk a little bit more about things in there uh, but also um, it, it's that structure and the the uh, the routine that helps classrooms run smoothly. So students at home, um, there's two different, uh, well not two different sorts, there are many different sorts, but I'm just going to really focus on a couple of different sorts here. The eager beavers who are just going to soak up resources and soak up time, they need everything you can give them. Um, I've had um, a homestay student last year who was exactly one of these and she was just thirsty, hungry for knowledge, all she wanted was more, more, more. It was quite um, challenging for the teacher. Uh, in the end to just keep up and to be able to give her what she needed all the time and Moodle was an answer there you know put everything up and available and she can access it as she needed um, so that's what the LMS provides is you know a multitude of resources they're there when they need them they don't have to badger the teacher everyone's an awful lot happier there's less of those than we'd like um, Oh, on that same topic, it might be worth think, just thinking of the um, university papers you've done yourself, I've done um, one reasonably recently and um, I wanted to do well and I wanted resources and it was a distance learning thing though not quite the same as as um, the classroom thing but it was just so much nicer for me when I could just hoover up the resources that were available and do what I needed to do without having to wait for an email back from the teacher from the lecturer who was um, dealing with you know, all the other classes and the rest of it so um, yeah, if, if any of you have had that experience, you'll you, um, you'll have that feeling, I'm sure. So, students at home, um, this my son is easily distracted. Uh, he's a good kid. He wants to do well. He's only 11, but put him in front of a computer, and it might not be exactly as um, exactly like this. I don't think he'd get quite as intellectual as watching interviews with Justin Bieber's mum but um, he will be easily distracted. Um, that little fellow down there is the instant gratification monkey and uh, when you're trying to get work done he's in your way. So there's a really great article with Wait By Why um, guy. He's um, written a couple of very long form articles about why procrastinators procrastinate. So if you're trying to put off some work someday that would be a great way to, to not do some work is to read that, that article. Really interesting. Um, the instant gratification monkey is taking him away from it and he's always putting stuff off until finally the panic monster arrives because he knows he wants to do well so he's got to get some um, work done and this is what the LMS is giving them it, so it's uh, as soon as it's like stuck it's like oh I've got to do the work right now give some power to act you know that learner agency the, the the ability to just get on and do it you can find the thing you need without having to go look for it it's on Moodle you can find the things that you need right now there's no distractions there's no barriers so the learning management system provides um, uh, a strong resource for people doing home learning whether they're hard workers or whether they're having a last minute panic with exams um, so having a, a sort of general look now we've looked at the um, the classroom and we've looked at the home environment um, the, the general idea of the learning management system is it's going to be removing the barriers um, and there's no password or account hassles that our students use the same password for everything 
uh, their wireless so of course they don't want to use their data plan so the first thing they do is they hook up their device to the wireless at school um, there's been phones in the past some days other days it's something else and um, so they know the password to Moodle they don't have to think about that and in fact if they're logged onto um, the school computers they just hit login they don't even have to uh, type in a username password um, it means that once they've learned a little bit about how to navigate their way through Moodle what is required to be done they've done that in one subject that transfers straight across to all the other subjects so there's a lot of um, uh, efficiencies involved in making that happen. It gives us learners a lot more control of what they do, how they access the resources, what they do with them, how they access them at other times as well. We don't forget that learning isn't just about the right here right now, it's about oh, okay how do we reinforce that and follow up on it and you know when exam time comes around and all the rest of it. It's that one-stop shop as well. Um, there's the difference between the Pakarang College website and the Pakarang College Learning Management System. The website is the public view of the, of the school, really. The Learning Management System is the way we get things done, the one-stop shop where they can see their student results, they can see notices and other boring things. Um, but it's also, once they're there, they might as well get some learning done. They, they know where to find things. There's no overhead in that. And they can make connections through it as well. There's loads of ways to do that. We haven't leveraged that as much as I'd like, but it's available and it's something that we can pick up as we need to. Of course, teachers have got plenty of barriers as well. Um, these are some things that you would probably recognize as coming from your own sta staff. Um, this particular staff member, okay, is um, good guy, all the rest of it, but he, I, I've certainly heard the tried it once, didn't like it from him, uh, and you know, we've all had experiences where it all just turns to custard, and a lot of teachers I think are not quite as aware that um, when it comes to um, classroom activities using e-learning, you should expect it the first time through to be a bit of a disaster, uh, that's okay, but teachers aren't okay with that. They don't like it at all. They look, teachers um, are always, you know, waking up in the middle of the night having had a nightmare about that class that didn't listen, that everything went wrong, and you left the books at home and all the rest of it. And often e-learning is the embodiment of that particular experience in the classroom the first time. So trying to um, mitigate against that is um, is that we've now got a one place where. where teachers know that it's going to be the same this year next year the year after whatever um, it's going to uh, be the same across all of their different classes it's going to be relatively low overhead Moodle's way better than it was in terms of um, getting stuff out there it allows them to develop a competence in the safe environment where they, they they're working with other people who are dealing with the same thing um, of course, resource where teachers need freedom to do more. That's really probably not what Moodle is about so much. Although I would argue that Moodle has got some really strong tools in it that, um, that those resourceful teachers can leverage really well if they if they make that choice. So works for me. My experience is uh, my, rather than talking the abstract all the time, let's just talk about what um, what uh, actually I do in the classroom. That might be meaningful in terms of you. I do uh, maths and digital technologies which are there's a lot of skills in those there's knowledge but there's also skills you have to be able to solve equations you have to be able to um, write a, a you know decompose a program and, and write, a pro write some code. Um, I'm always dealing with this guy in the classroom um, and I am this guy quite a lot. Um, there's We've all been there, you know, you sat in an environment like this, you're looking around and you're looking at the, the boards with the, um, the, the... There's all kinds of distractions all day long. So I tend to do lots of videos. Uh, I use Screencast-O-Matic all the time, which mean and upload them, embed them in Moodle so they can find them straight away. They don't have to go looking on my channel. Um, it stops them from having to do the click along with me because they can watch the video, pause, do their own thing, come back and so on. Um, and uh, it's a just-in-time kind of way of making resources available for when the students need them. I get it in the classroom all the time that a student will, will need to be able to do something. It's something we covered a, a, a little while ago, and I'll say, you know, hop onto Moodle, there's a video about that. Uh, it gives me the, you know, it's a win. I've, I've, I've won five minutes to go and deal with someone else, and they've got the knowledge that they need. And, of course, after a while, they get good at um, looking that stuff up for themselves. I also um, do some of the, uh, rather than just, 
dropping resources for them to consume. Um, I do get them to do a bit of making of stuff, uh, glossaries, collating knowledge, um, and um, I've used the wiki tool and checklists are really good. Uh, there's a whole bunch of tools um, that are specific to Moodle, but I'm sure there are similarities. Well, uh, let's get away from this guy. Um, just some Moodle specifics here. So um, just talk about why we've gone with Moodle rather than not. Uh, it's got a huge active community. That's the number one point. It's worldwide and there's some great resources because of that. Yeah, it's uh, there's an awful lot of uh, university based information and resources uh, but it's um, there's also a huge amount of secondary based resources and you get things like I'm currently doing the the MOOC the learn to Moodle MOOC and there's uh, nearly 4,000 people across the whole world doing it which gives them the, the um, you know if you've got that many people doing it it means that you've got the drive to make it a really high quality course with it, which it is uh, and also you're making connections and talking to people and um, not just across the world but there's plenty of people in New Zealand using it. It used to be really foully ugly as it was designed by programmers and uh, still is designed by programmers but it's definitely getting better. Um, if I look at the version 1.9 uh, it was hideous to use it was actually very daunting and unpleasant for teachers to try and get anything done. But these days, um, it's better in every way. And it's getting better all the time. It's been a topic of conversation at recent moots, um, or has been for years, of course, that um, the, the number one improvement that's required is to get the, um, get the user interface stuff sorted, get it looking prettier, getting it easier to use, getting good GUI. So th there's loads of going into that. Um, and of course it has got all that scope for power users, there's some incredibly powerful tools that are available, it's very extensible, there's loads of plugins available and um, there's people developing those worldwide and you can just pick those up and install them for the one or two users who are interested and it just works really really well. It does need a bit of managing, don't they all? Um, it is a bit university centric at times, not as much as it used to be. Um, and provide, if it's not managed, if people aren't um, uh, given ways to get into it that are relatively straightforward for them it can be very daunting. Um, I still think it's the best one that's currently out there and looking at the way forward it's got a really thriving kind of sense of community. It's got a much improved funding model that's coming through very soon uh, that should mean that the stuff that actually matters gets worked on rather than the stuff that the, the programmers think matters. And of course um, the uh, elephant in the room when it comes to the LMS is how do you get people to use it and how do you get them to use it effectively and that all comes down to staff training support which is a tricky tricky business whole staff sucks it's really hard to just get everyone to do something meaningful all in the same room click along with me um, is just awful and it doesn't give people the the tools that they need when they need them um, What's much better is to do it faculty based and have small groups um, to have those champions of which um, Billy spoke yesterday. And for me, I think it's all about having lots of just in time resources, which can be people. And also I've got a, a whole knowledge base of um, for each tool, just a quick little video of me saying this is how you use it. This is um, what it's for. Um, I think actually people is, is more important than that. You know, for instance, I'd sat down this morning, spent 20 minutes with a teacher, got way more done than if she had been trying to uh, work it out for herself and fudging her way through. And she feels way more positive about uh, what she's going to get done in there. So the takeaways, big schools need a structure. Uh, the LMS is part of that structure. It's um, by having that structure in place, you are removing some barriers. It's not the whole answer. It's not an easy sell to staff. Uh, it's not um, very sexy, uh, but it needs to be sold. Um, it makes the easy stuff easy and gets out of the way so you can do the hard stuff. So removing barriers is the sell to your staff. Just one moment. <coughs> 